Okay, with that understanding of uh, the problem formulation and the different things that you can do with uh, what is an agent, what is a platform, um, what, what I want you to understand here, multi-agent, we're referring exactly to those you know, little robots I, uh, uh, over there, right? So in this case, imagine this is gone and then imagine this is gone, this is a multi-agent problem because this guy's, right? Um, so when we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna do a, a review, uh, a, a quick, quick um, review of uh, actor critic methods. And I say review because I know that there's been, you know, some, some office hours and, and information already uh, provided to you. Uh, but I'm gonna try to go into the details so that you, to give you everything you need uh, to implement a solution for a multi-agent uh, problem, multi-agent environment. So actor critic methods, you can think of it as, you know, methods that are here in the middle where you are, it's a hybrid between a policy-based and a value-based method. Now policy-based is a little bit of a, um, uh, it's, it's an unclear, it's, it's unclear what uh, algorithms belong to policy-based methods that do not uh, uh, belong to the actor critic methods. But I'm gonna try to give you a, a, an idea though as to what we mean by policy base. By policy base mean that we have a policy that is being approximated um, in our agent. Uh, typically that is just, you know, you can imagine just a neural network that um, you input the observations of the agent and then you output an action. Okay, and depending what you have as an output, you can have a continuous control, meaning each node, each output node, uh, is gonna represent a mean and standard deviation. You actually have two nodes, right, in that case. One is gonna output the mean and then the log standard deviation and the other one and so on. So you can have that setting, or you can have a setting in which you are outputting uh, discrete actions. Okay, but the, the point though is that you're approximating a policy. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, you are approximating a value function, okay? And here you are likely familiar if you did implement, uh, well, you, you, if you implement uh, DQN, uh, you, you, you exactly know what, what I'm referring to. If you otherwise, you know, Q-learning or SARSA, some of the other uh, algorithms are very easy to understand. But the point here is that you are approximating the uh, uh, an estimate of the reward to go, right? So the expected return um, that you uh, that you that you uh, have, you're estimated at, at any given state or state action pairs, and and then so those are called value-based methods, policy-based methods. In actor critic methods, uh, you have the two uh, models, the two approximations. There is a common uh, issue in machine learning, statistical learning in general, that this bias versus variance, and, and we've talked about it a little bit. But the point is, like, let, let's imagine that we're training here to, you know, score goals, and we really want to practice, you know, hitting this target. Uh, I mean, ideally, you know, every time that we uh, try, we get it right there. But you know, in reality, that's not how life works. You have to do some training. And you may actually be off by some margin, you know, and you, you are very, like very often off by the same margin. This uh, type of issue is typically called uh, biased uh, low variance. The, the variability here of the samples is, is, is small, relatively small, uh, but all of those samples are off by some margin. So you, you, can, you can imagine what, what that means by biased in low variance. Um, you can also have the case in which you have, I'm going to say, low bias or uh, unbiased in some in some cases, but uh, the variability is um, the variance is higher, right? So in this case, we're talking about low bias, high variance. Obviously, this is a spectrum, right? You can go all the way from high high, high, which is probably the one that you don't want, uh, all the way down to the low, low, which is what we're going after, okay? 
why do I say this? Well, because in reinforcement learning, uh, you remember Monte Carlo returns versus uh, TD returns. So policy-based methods, when, when, when you refer to as policy-based that is not necessarily actor critic, you typically use an unbiased uh, estimator uh, that is high variance and therefore sometimes not a better uh, selection. So let me, let me go into more details about that. So the policy-based methods typically use a Monte Carlo return, according to Sutton, um, and your Sutton book, so make sure you read it so you understand what I mean by that. The, the, the critic aspect of a critic brings bias into the whole equation, and therefore you have a bootstrapped um, value function being used. But, but let, me give, um, let me get into the details as to what I mean here by uh, bias and variance in the context of reinforcement learning. So what you see on the screen right now is a, um, it's a trajectory. Okay, you are calculating uh, the return G at time T. So this is a state, and then there's some trajectory. You collect that reward, that reward, that reward, that reward, and then you use that to calculate your uh, return. The, um, the equations for that is this for the undiscounted case, and then for the discounted case, you just add, obviously, gammas to it, right? Um, the, so this would be, obviously, the discounted and so on. But um, this return is really not what you are, what the agent is trying to, to uh, optimize, to, to maximize, sorry. The agent is really trying to uh, maximize the value function, basically the expected uh, return, right? Um, and that is calculated in this way. Right, but you see the problem here, though, that this has a value, but this is going to have perhaps very different values because you have a lot of stochasticity built in into this. This one sample can have many, many, many things and end up in, let's say, you win the match, 100. This sample can have many, many, many things happening in there, and you have, you know, the outcome. You lose the match. And so on. And you know, the the point of uh, bootstrapping comes in circle um, when when you see this issue a little bit uh, a little bit more in detail. So let me get into the detail. This is a Monte Carlo estimate. When you are estimating a return, you have this trajectory. Uh, you go to state uh, st action, get the reward, go to the next state, and then keep going all the way until you get that final. Uh, reward, then you calculate that guy, right? But then there is, again, these are the equations, the undiscounted case and then the discounted case. You then go through the same state and have another trajectory, have a new uh, return. Let's say, so we have here A, B. Uh, you have another return, you get another um, uh, you have another trajectory, then you get and calculate another return. Uh, GTC, and so on. Let's say that you have another one, right? And I, what I want to illustrate here is that you may have one that doesn't go through the state. To calculate the uh, the uh, value of this state, you do not use this return. Also, have in mind that you're not just calculating this one state. This is just a snapshot, obviously, but you're calculating the values for this state and for this state and for this state and for this state and for that state and so on. So there is really calculations happening all the time for everything, right? But just obviously to simplify it, we only concentrate on this one state. What's going to happen is that is going to be, uh, you know, the expected return. So you basically average those guys and then you get, you know, an estimate. Uh, for that state. Okay, then we have on, so on this side we have the Monte Carlo estimate, and then so what is exactly a TD estimate? Well, a TD estimate is the realization that you can have this state, that action, that reward, and then once you land in that state, you can actually use the previous estimate that you had for state st plus one to calculate what's going to happen in the entire future. So what that's going to look like is um, it, it realize here this return 
is really the collection of those rewards in the undiscounted case. But we're going and saying, well, if I get one RT plus one, plus the discounted value of all of those future rewards, that's the same as what's on the top, which is technically just you know replacing that for the return at the next state. And then so with that realization, you can just basically remove all of that because you have an estimate of this guy and use that to, um, to calculate the return for this uh, or the value function for this other guy. But let's get into more details as to what that looks like. So again, T, TD estimate is here. You have that trajectory. You have uh, GT uh, in state SD, action AT. You take that, you get that reward. Uh, and then the value of the next state can be used to cut off the entire rest of the trajectory. And then to be able to estimate, and you can see it here, that uh, same value function. You have another uh, such return, you cut it off, and ST is going to be a different state. This is the T is just the time, so but the, the actual state can be a completely different state. Then you have another one and so on, and it's very similar to what we had before. Okay, so then, then you have these three trajectories, but you can see how it's cut, it's chopped, right? You don't wait until the end. Now, the problem is that because you're using estimates to create this estimate, then you have this bootstrapping issue. You have this uh, bias being introduced into learning, into the learning. And while bias is something that we don't like, sometimes bias can speed up training. So we introduce bias, um, and and uh, with with that we reduce variance, and learning can occur uh, much much uh, quicker. And then again. Uh, this is the, the Monte Carlo returns, which are typically using policy-based methods. And then this is the um, TD type of uh, returns or bootstrapping, one-step bootstrapping. And, and, and you recall that you can, you can extend this to, you know, one step or two steps or three steps and so on. And then on top of that, you can actually use all of the returns in something called TD Lambda, right? And in the case of uh, actor critic, it's actually called GAE, uh, Generalized Advantage Estimation. Um, it's not too difficult to implement. And um, regardless though, I recommend that you check out that paper because this paper gives you a really good insight as to what are some of the best estimators to use in an actor critic um, algorithm. 